Governor Newsom unveiled an $18.1 billion plan he says will combat inflation. The governor says the goal is to get immediate relief to residents as the state is now bombarded with record high gas prices. This comes on the heels of news that the budget surplus is approaching $100 billion. So according to Newsom, the proposal aims to provide tax refunds to help address inflation, emergency rental assistance, funding to help Californians pay for past due utility bills, funding for hospital and nursing home staff, funding for free public transit, make health coverage more affordable for middle class families, pause the diesel sales tax, and waive child care fees for low income families. So joining us now to discuss this proposal is California GOP Chair Jessica Milan Patterson. Jessica, good to see you tonight. Hey, Ginger, great to be with you. My goodness, these are some big numbers from the surplus, that's $97 billion right now, to the taxes, to the cost of living. Is this budget sustainable? Well, don't get too excited about that surplus. Most of it will not be going to us. Uh, the governor has plenty of spending. I, I know we should not be surprised about that, but plenty of one-time spending that's planned for it. What we still don't see in this is tax relief on the gas side for Californians. And just last week, the nonpartisan LAO said that the quickest way and the best way to get dollars and relief back to California drivers is to do the gas tax holiday, which California Republicans have brought to the floor three times now, and no California Democrats will join them in. Uh, the governor's uh, proposal on tax rebates still have not been approved by the full the Democrat legislature. And um, we continue to see that uh, you know, 67 days later, after they promised relief at the pump, nothing is being done by California Democrats, and this budget is no different. Yeah, I have a feeling that if that happens, it will come just before voting month. So I'd say expect it potentially around October. But um, how does all this spending combat inflation? I mean, we learned that in Economics 101. Right. We have huge problems here in California, and we're seeing them play out at the national level when things start here and then, uh, you know, regressive Democrats, because that's exactly what's happening. These taxes um, are hurting our most uh, vulnerable communities around our state, and it does really nothing to keep any Californians here. Um, our issues with affordability, our issues with rising crime, with a very, very poor education system that is failing our children. And of course, the gas taxes is forcing many Californians, many lifelong Californians to have to leave. And this governor is proud of this system. And um, unfortunately, I can tell you, even though he thinks that Californians have benefited from it, when we look at what's happened here, when it comes to crime, when it co comes to the housing affordability crisis, when it comes to our failing education system, when it comes to the highest gas prices in the nation, today we reached a new high. $5.98 is our average here in California. We're paying $1.50 more per gallon than any other state in the nation. I can tell you, Californians do not feel that they have benefited from this regressive tax, pro tax process that they have here in California. What about something missing from the budget? Because obviously we've got a huge drought issue and our wildfires. It didn't seem like there's any money addressing water storage or, or trying to get some of the underbrush that we know is a multi-billion dollar project. Uh, so we take away some of the fuels from these fires. The governor's budget is woefully inadequate when it comes to one of those things that we know here in California we can expect every single year. And we've seen it ravage communities and decimate entire cities. And this governor has not done enough. And when he does put forward uh, money to, to combat wildfires and do the prevention, um, we find out that that work doesn't actually get done. And uh, he, in fact, lied to us about the work that was done last year. And so um, he is not only you know, woefully inadequate when it comes to budgeting for this, but when the execution time comes, um, we're not getting that done either. Water storage is another huge issue that we have here in California. Um, and voters approve bonds and no work has been done to make sure that that water, when we do have heavy rain times, is being stored. Um, we have many, many problems that this governor still uh, tries to turn a blind eye to, um, but when when the fire season starts, and um, you know we've already seen some brush fires this year, um, it's going to be really really tough when we don't have the adequate money to put, to put into wildfire prevention and water storage.
What about the whole housing issue going on here in California? I mean, our average home in San Diego is now $1 million. How can that even be considered affordable? It's, it really isn't for the everyday average Californian, it isn't. And, you know, again, this governor has a lot of lofty goals. You'll remember his campaign promise to us that he would have 3.5 million homes built by 2025. He has changed the goalpost for himself on that, and he's now moved it down a million to 2.5 million and given himself five extra years till 2030. Um, this is a guy who, even when he has big plans, um, he is so bad at executing and following through on them. I think we should stop, you know, pretending he is not Lucy with the football. Yeah, wow. Well, we'll see what's happening next. I mean, uh, I'm thankful I don't balance my budget this way because I don't want to pay for it. But certainly appreciate your insight and talking with you tonight, Jessica. Thank you. Thanks, Ginger.